you are a successful, confident woman, but for years you struggle with low self-esteem just because of some a mean thing that someone said when you were young. So what happened? Yeah, and it's so funny you said I'm confident. It's I think for a lot of years it's like a false confidence, right? Because I know people are looking at me, and so I have to, on the outside, pretend like I'm Amy from Sela, and on the inside, it's that constant recording of like, are people staring at how big my legs are? Have people, you know, judging how much weight I've gained? Or and so it is. It's like this inner monologue that's constantly running. But I was, um, I was 13 the first time someone basically said I was too fat to be a cheerleader while I was, you know, doing my little cheers. And um, I just remember it felt like a slap in the face. And it, I guess it broke something inside of me. And I didn't even realize it until later on that I just began to think about myself a certain way. Um, my mom was overweight in her whole life. And so she was trying to help me, but she didn't really know how. So she just kind of would make me diet or work out. Um, and so I began to resent her um, because I was like, you're on a diet for a million years. Don't make me diet. And so I just, my kind of teenage and, and those you know, young adult years, I was really miserable on the inside and struggling. And, um, and I would say over the course of the last 20 years, really had seasons where I've struggled with that self-esteem and struggled with that inner confidence versus outer confidence. Um, and it would like, if I lost weight, I would be confident. And if I gained weight, I would kind of put the wall back up, um, back and forth, just yo-yoing, you know, not only in my weight, but in my ability to just believe that I was beautiful. And putting yourself out there is so tough, regardless of whether or not, whatever, because everyone has insecurities, whether they oh, yeah. talk about it or not. You know, thinning hair, too tall, too short, whatever. Right. Like there's a million things, right? And people can be so mean. What was it like for you in the music industry then as you started taking over stages? Did you get some comments then as well? Well, yeah, and in the beginning when I was just trying, like I moved to Nashville to like try to get a Christian record deal. And I had a lot of people say like, you know, you're probably gonna wanna lose some weight or no record label's gonna wanna give you a deal. Like, you're the best voice we ever heard, but you need to lose some weight, you need to change your look. And I just remember like, I was smaller than I am now, I think, when I started. So I was just like, okay, that's really hard. I mean, if it was easy to lose weight, I would've been skinny my whole life. And so um, I remember I dyed my hair blonde and I did lose a bunch of weight and I still didn't get a record deal. And so I remember when I met my husband, I always joke, I duped him because I had broken up with a guy and I lost a bunch of weight and dyed my hair blonde and then I was like super cute. And then I met him and I'm like, I duped you. I am not a skinny blonde. Like I am a brown haired husky girl with some self-esteem issues. Um, and he has never once, well, our 19th anniversary is tomorrow. And he has never once looked at me or treated me like I'm like not just the most beautiful woman in the world. He just has never cared about my weight. He's never cared about the way that I looked. Um, but you know, the Nashville cared. And I just remember feeling so um, just done with trying to look a certain way to get a record deal. And I just remember even when I met Selah, I was just leading worship at my church and I had told a friend of mine, you know, I just am done with trying to be a certain way for the Christian music industry because if they can't accept me, then nobody's going to. And I'm so content just leading worship at church and if that's all God has for me, then I'm okay with that. And she just happened to have been a professor at Belmont and been the boys professor at Belmont. So when they were looking to hire a new singer, they called her. And they said, hey, do you have anyone you'd recommend? And she was like, I know a girl. And I remember obsessing over my outfit even for that audition and worrying. I'm gonna walk in there and they're gonna say the same thing everyone else says. You have a great voice, but you need to lose 50 pounds. And I walked in <laughs> and like Todd had on a Michigan t-shirt and like had his twin daughters in his arms. And Alan was in shorts, cargo shorts and a t-shirt. And they were just real guys. And they've never, not once in the 17 years I've been with them, said a thing about the way that I look or, you know, other than that I look, you know, beautiful. They've never said anything about my weight. In fact, we've all struggled together, the group, all three of us, to get healthy together. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it just, at some point, you just have to stop listening. That's so good. And I know, what, what impact did your husband speaking life giving words into you as well? How did that start changing what you, what you were saying to yourself in your own head? I I wish that I would have listened to him. I mean, even my, my sister, my older sister has always just told me how beautiful I am. 
always been so gushing about my beauty. Um, but she was always really skinny. And so I just used to be like, how do you even see? Like I couldn't, I just thought something was wrong with her eyes. <laughs> and the same with my husband. Um, and then this last year, my husband and I have gotten healthy together. We've lost, I've lost 70 pounds. He's lost 60 pounds. Wow. And we're so funny because we go to hug now. We're like, our arms go all the way around. <laughs> and you don't, when you're in love with the person, with your mate, and you just love them unconditionally for no matter how they look, no matter what they weigh, it doesn't bother you. But it's noticeable when you lose weight. We're like, hey, we're so skinny. We're hugging you. Know? It's, um, he's, but he's always told me that I'm beautiful. I remember when I knew I wanted to marry him. We were just friends and I didn't want to get romantic really because I was just the guy I dated before him said I was too overweight to marry. And so I just had a wall up. And I remember I was playing the piano very terribly because I don't play and singing something I'd written to him. And I looked over at him and he said, I didn't, I'm not going to say I had a vision because I don't, I don't have visions. He said, but I saw while you were playing, like, I know that I'm supposed to marry you and take care of you the rest of your life, no matter what God's called you to, because he has called you to something great. And that was before I ever met Zayla. It was two years before wow. I ever met Zayla. Wow. And so that right there, I was literally like, take me to Jared. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's go get married. Um, and we did. We got married just a couple months after that. That's so beautiful. And, you know, you talked about your, your current weight loss journey. That's been a lot more than just the physical. I mean, there's there's been letting go of things and leaving them in your past. Talk to me yeah. about the shift that's happening inside of you. Yeah, I've lost and gained weight my entire life. And before I had my son, um, before I got pregnant with him, I lost 80 pounds, but I was like starving. And I thought that I was experiencing victory in weight loss because I was losing all this weight. Um, and the minute I got pregnant, phew, gained it all back. I mean, like, and then some. Mm -hmm. And the day that I had him, I was the same weight that I was the day that I had started that weight loss program. And, um, and then I just struggled for all these years. You know, I would lose, I would gain, I would lose, I would gain. And um, I only ever really just wanted to do a diet and get skinny. And that's why they failed every single time. Because I just, I couldn't, I didn't want to think about changing like my mindset or how I thought about food or even how I thought about myself. I just, I just wanted to be skinny. And why can't I be skinny, <laughs> Lord? Like my sisters. Um, and I, this last June, I, um, I was at a place where I had been at an event and the woman speaking was backstage and she was talking about her daughter and she was talking about her daughter's eating disorder, but she was describing my life. And I was like, what? eating disorder could this girl possibly have because she sounds just like me the way she I would cry over food I would fixate on the last thing um, the last piece of pizza or the last donut in the box and if someone else ate it I was literally sad about it and this woman was talking about her daughter this way and I was like what do you mind me asking and she said well it's called binge eating disorder and now that she's on medication she's doing great and I was like Okay, so I went back to my hotel you know, room and started researching binge eating disorder. And I was like, oh my goodness, I tick all those boxes. But I've had this really intense emotional relationship with food my entire life. I used to hide food from my mom, hide it from my husband when I was a newlywed, um, eat in secret so people wouldn't judge what I was eating, but also so I could eat more. Um, I mean, like leave a place and go eat again. I mean, just really intense food addiction problems. And I never really, I think I just wanted to be like, oh, I'm chunky because I love food. And I was like, no, I'm overweight because I have a food addiction. And I'm unhappy because the addiction is, you know, out of control. And so I sat in my hotel room and it was literally the same day an email came in about weight loss surgery and my insurance doesn't cover it. And I was like, well, I don't have the money to, you know, I'm not going to finance a weight loss surgery, and I had just cried out to the Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I have a friend who's a health coach. I've known her since we were teenagers. And she's prayed with me, and she's prayed for me, and she has been there for me for so many years, waiting, waiting patiently for me to be ready. And so I reached out, and I was almost, I mean, I was 296 pounds when I called her. And so I was like, I don't think I'm gonna ever lose a pound ever successfully. That's where I was in June of last year. 
I just had lost all hope that I could even, you know, lose a pound. And she was like, okay, well, I believe in you. I believe you can do this. And so I'm here for you. And I will tell you what, that personal accountability, that cheerleader, someone who believed in me more than I could believe in myself, that's what I needed. I needed to be honest about my feelings with food. I needed to have someone to text and be like, I am literally sad because people are eating cake and I can't have cake and it makes me sad. Why am I sad? It's just cake. But there was, you know, an emotional connection to all this food that throughout the years, when I was sad, I would eat. When I was happy, I would eat. When I was, you know, frustrated, I would eat. And so I had just created all these lifelong habits of eating with every single emotion. And so this last year, I've taken a break from like weight loss. Right now I'm maintaining, but I've maintained like 70 pounds lost and I feel good and my body doesn't ache. But it's so funny because when I eat certain things, I'm like, oh, I feel like an old lady again. So I've even learned I have some food intolerances that I was just always sinus congested, like literally all related to food. But the journey that I've been on has not been Amy's gonna get skinny. The journey I've been on has been, Amy needs to learn how to live with a food addiction and understand that there's gonna be bumps in the road. Uh, I don't eat entire pizzas anymore. I haven't in a really long time. Um, But even like little things, like I had a friend pass away very suddenly in March and I had to go to the grocery store that evening to pick up some groceries and I was like, the old Amy would have eaten a half a cake. Honestly, I would have. I would have all night long, you know what I mean? Just a few bites of a cake. And so I bought some cupcakes because I was like, I am going to eat a cupcake because it's gonna kind of feel good and I want one. And so I did. I ate one cupcake and my husband ate one cupcake and then we saved the rest for the kids. And so I was like, there's the difference is that I was able to say, yeah, I want this and it's going to taste good. And it's kind of going to feed a little something that I need, but I'm not going to do the thing I, I used to do and go crazy and eat all six cupcakes mm-hmm. because the old Amy probably would have eaten half of them in the car before I got home and told my husband I only bought three. So you're making this incredible progress on yes. the weight loss side, but what about like how you see yourself side? What has changed there? Okay. So last October I was at this event And this woman was talking about the way that her siblings used to talk to her. And they called her Husky her whole life. So she thought she was supposed to be overweight. And she was talking about our words that we declare over ourselves and how important it is to think about what's been said about us and what we hold on to as as truth. Because if we believe that about ourselves, then then that's what we become. Self-fulfilling prophecy pretty much, right? And I was like, literally like the Holy Spirit, because I would often say, well, I'm on a health journey and I'm losing weight, but I'm still overweight or I'm still fat or I've got, and it was still a negative. And in that moment, it was like the Holy Spirit was like, you do this all the time to yourself. And I was like, okay, okay, Lord, here's what I am. I'm a work in progress and I am always contending for my health. And I use that word contending like a boxer, right? Like I am always fighting every day to be a healthier version of me, but I am beautifully and wonderfully made. And it is so important to say those things about yourself. It really is, and I, it's so silly because my friend used to say, write it on a post-it at night and say out loud, I am beautiful. And I'd be like, you are so weird. <laughs> but I think it's so important because we speak so many negative things over ourselves. And to make that transformation in the last year of believing that I am who God made me to be, and I am, I am beautiful and I am healthy. And it is a true statement that I'm the healthiest now that I've ever been in my whole life, mm-hmm. regardless of what size I wear. And to know that emotionally I'm healthy in the way that I view my body and the way that I am trying to parent my children into their health, that to me is just, you know, that's more important than what size pants I wear. Okay, 30 seconds left. For that person that's watching right now, that's kind of like, I so, you know, feel your pain. Mm -hmm. I've been in that place and I don't love myself. You know, I don't feel good about myself or I feel shamed about where I'm at in my Mm -hmm. health journey. Well, what encouragement would you give them? I would say, um, go to your Bible and open Psalm 139 and read it out loud to yourself, out loud every single day. It's this, 
the, I don't know, obviously the whole chapter, but I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He made me in my mother's womb. He knows my going ins. He knows my coming outs. He created you to be the you that you are. And so just know that regardless of what the outside looks like, the inside is crying out for Jesus and for his wholeness to make you whole. <laughs>